Okay. We have, we have a whole steampunk. Today has been weird. I guess this evening has been kind of weird. And this was added to it. But I'm just going to go with the flow. Maybe that's why I chose this name. Can you guys see my whole body without my head being cut off? Um, I can't see your head because of uh, us at the top, but that's okay. Okay. We should, yeah, you should just be able to... Uh, I mean, when you're on the mat, it won't matter. Right. There we go. That's fine. That works. <laughs> My head is totally cut off. Oh, it's okay. You'll be able to hear me. And make sure you guys are able to see my feet. Um, you don't stand up much anyway. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start in mountain pose. And so if you guys saw my, um, my posts earlier, I talked about how this is going to be kind of a throat chakra oriented. And so our throat chakra or our Vishuddha chakra allows us to speak our truth and to um, listen to what other people are saying to us and you know, not shrink or puff up, but just stand your sacred ground and say what's important to you. And I think that's really important, especially in, you know, today, 2021, after everything that's just happened in 2020. Let me admit her really fast. There we go. Um, it's really important to do that, you know, to speak up for what's happening around you and, um, let your voice be heard, not only in those close personal relationships that you have with people, but also in your everyday life and just people in passing. Um, so we're going to do some poses today to open up our throat chakra and not only listen to our voice, but let our voice be heard as well. And so you can bring your hands into a mudra. And so we're going to interlace our fingers and bring our thumbs to touch. And then bring that right about your belly button area. And then mountain pose, our toes are spread nice and wide on our mat. We're creating a nice straight line all the way up. Strong in our ankles. Maybe just a slight bend of the knee so you're not locking them out and creating a um, awkward up opposing motion here facing the other way. So just a little bit of bend, a little bounce. Your hips are stacked on top of your knees. Zipping your spine up, engaging your belly button. Rolling your shoulders down and back away from your ears. And gaze down the bridge of your nose or bring your eyes to close. Connecting into your breath. With each inhale, you can feel your belly rise and your mood your hands. With each exhale, you can feel the cool air down the top of your lip. Expanding through your clavicles, your rib cage, your belly, and exhale, your belly, your rib cage, collarbones. Really letting your breath sink deep into your belly. This is a good time to set an intention for your practice. 
So, sorry, I lost you for a second. Set an intention for your practice and really think about how you can open up your throat chakra, how you can speak your truth. how you can aid those around you and yourself by using your voice. A mantra for the throat chakra, the Vishuddha chakra. I speak up for myself. I express myself with clarity and confidence. When I speak, I do not back away from what is true. I, I express gratitude toward my life. I gratitude towards my life. Take a couple more deep breaths. On your next inhale, take the biggest, deepest breath that you've taken all day. Filling up the bottoms of your lungs. And on your exhale, create a little bit of restriction in the back of your throat and audibly let it out. This is Ujjayi breath or lion or fire breath, a lot of different names. And try to stick with that breath throughout your whole practice. It'll build a little bit of heat on your inhale and exhale. And again, it'll ignite that Vishuddha chakra. On your next inhale, reach your arms all the way up, reaching for all that goodness. Exhale, hands to prayer, back down to heart center. Inhale, bring arms all the way up. On your exhale, we're gonna send the right foot back behind the left, just a touch, and reach over, expanding through our right side body. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, send the left leg over. Inhale, center. Exhale, right leg. Flow with your own breath. As fast or as slow as that might feel. Staying with your ujjayi breath, the restriction in the back of the throat. and pausing for as long as you need to. You can find fluidity in your movements. Rolling the wrists. Really sending your hands over to the right or the left. Take a couple more each side. When you're ready, we're gonna come meet back at center, hands all the way above head feeling like an imaginary light between your hands, pulsing all the way through your body, through your crown, your throat, your heart, your abdomen, your pelvis, your feet. Just 
Straighten your arms just a little bit more. Carry that energy with you. And on your exhale, we're going to hinge at the hips and forward fold all the way over. Creating a nice, generous bend in the back of our knees. You can nod your head yes or no. Grabbing opposite hand and opposite elbow, swaying back and forth. Exhale all the air out of your body and feel each one of your vertebrae separate just a little bit more. Inhale, halfway lift, placing your fingertips to shins or tops of thighs and really straightening through your spine, strong in the back of the neck, navel tucked into spine, shoulders pulling in towards one another. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise. Bring your arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way up. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. One more time. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, ujjayi breath, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. Just waking up the spine a little bit. You can extend through one leg and then the other. Stretching through your back hamstrings. Take a couple more little pedals. Inhale, keep your fingertips on your mat. Nice bend in the back of your knees. And place your hands flat. So if this is hard for you to reach, if you have a, um, a block or a big book, a blanket, a little pillow, you can bring the ground to you, but creating that bend in the back of the knees will really help you here. So place your hands flat on the mat and you can bring your knees down to the earth and come to a tabletop position. Stacking the knees underneath the hips, the hands underneath the shoulders, tops of the feet are on the floor. Push through your shoulders, as to not sink into them. Stay mindful here. Creating a nice tabletop position, like somebody could come set a glass of water on the center of your back. Or usually when I'm in this position, a toddler will come and sit on my back, and that works too, I suppose. When you're ready, of course, we're gonna do a nice couple of cat cows. So exhale, drop the belly, tip the tailbone. Look up just a little bit. Big deep breath. Come back to your, to your ujjayi breath and exhale, round through the spine. Push through your shoulders, tuck your chin into your chest, cat, inhale, cow, 
Exhale, cat. When you come into cat, tucking your chin into your chest kind of ignites that uh, Vishuddha chakra a little bit more. And that's our focus for today. Go ahead and flow through your breath. Get a little wild because you know I like to and it feels awesome every time. So you can do big hip circles one way or the other or one way and then the other to really balance yourself out. You can send it all the way back and let your hips sink off to one side. Sink off to the other. Rounding through the spine, engaging through each one of your fingertips here. Take a couple more authentic movements. When you're ready, we're gonna tuck the toes, push through the shoulders, bring the knees up, and send the hips all the way up to the sky. Still with the bend in the back of the knees. Sucking in your navel. Go ahead and walk your dog a couple times. Joan has already probably done that a few times today. On your next exhale, we're going to bring our knees down, leaving our hips in the air, and then send our heart down. So crawl your hands a little bit forward and send your heart down towards your mat. Again, a good place for a block if you have one. If you're having a hard time coming all the way down. This is puppy pose. My screen keeps going black, so I can't see you guys. I'm going to make sure you're all doing okay. So in puppy pose, our heart is melted to our mat, our hips are stacked on top of our knees, with our tail still in the air. Really feeling a stretch through your mid spine. Inhale, look up to your hands and roll yourself forward, placing your belly on the mat into baby cobra. And baby cobra, our elbows are tucked in tight. Our top of our feet are on the mat. Shoulders pulled in toward one another. Strong through the neck, engaging through that low back. We're going to bring uh, one foot toward the back of our head and then the other and push back just slightly into King Cobra. Careful not to overextend and push too hard on your spine here. Just a gentle little push back, strong through your shoulders. Imagine the top or the bottom of your feet coming to the back of your head. You don't necessarily have to get there. You're engaging through your low back, engaging through the tops of your thighs, squeezing them together. Exhale, release, bring the top of your head to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Send those feet back up one more time. Reach, reach, reach. Exhale, release. 
Bring your hands back by your armpits, keeping your, or your elbows tucked in close to your body. Tuck the toes, push through your hands, send yourself back up into downward facing dog. We're gonna build a little bit of heat here. So stay with the, the fire breath or the ujjayi in the back of the throat. We're gonna do a couple of sun salutations. When you're ready, look towards your hands, shift your weight forward into plank. Option to go knees, chest, and then chin, or option to chaturanga all the way down, tucking your elbows in tight, come all the way down to your mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. Push yourself back up into downward facing dog. Sending the right leg up to the air, three legged dog. Tuck it in tight. Send your right foot all the way through to meet in between your hands. And push yourself up, root to rise, warrior one. So these past few times we've done warrior two. And in warrior two, our foot is parallel to this side of our mat. But in warrior one, you're a little bit more perpendicular. Still broad through your shoulders, looking over into the future of your right hand with the left hand in the past. 90 degree bend in your right leg. Careful not to send your knee in or too far over your um, middle toe. I'm gonna turn this way so you guys can see me. Exhale, windmill all the way. Send the right leg back to meet the left. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga all the way down. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, down. Inhale, push yourself up into downward facing dog. Sending the left leg up, nice and tall. Exhale, send it through in between your hands. Set yourself up for warrior one. Root to rise all the way up. Lovely. Take the second to really set yourself up. Feeling strong and powerful like a warrior. Exhale, windmill the hands down, send the left leg back to meet the right. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, back down. Inhale, push all the way up, downward facing dog. Sending the right leg back up this time. Through your hands. This time we're going to come into warrior two. So our foot, our left pinky is parallel to the back of our mat. Our right heel is creating an imaginary line going right through the center of our left foot. Our shoulders are open, meeting each other in our back. Fingers actively engaged. Embrace a little bit of shake or the heat that's building in your body. Let it add power to your pose. Exhale, windmill all the way down. Right foot comes back to meet the left. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga all the way down. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, back down. Inhale, push all the way up. Downward facing dog. Send the left leg up all the way and through your hands. Warrior two, root to rise, open it up. Looking over our left hand, letting our shoulders drop down from our ears. 
staying strong and activated in your right glute, your right thigh. Exhale, windmill all the way down. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, we're gonna come into front corp. So basically, you're just laying on the ground, <laughs> but on your stomach instead of on your back. Go ahead and take a little breather. Check back in with your body. Check back in with your intention. Feeling your heart pump against your mat. Inhale, look up and gently rest your chin on your mat. Igniting that Vishuddha chakra again. Feeling your breath. Pulse through your body. If your hands are still here by your sides, bring them out just a touch, so close to the body, and prop yourself up on your elbows. Fingertips engaged. Things strong through your shoulders, opening up. Gazing forward into Sphinx pose. So we've been a puppy and a dog and now we're a cat and this was not intentional and I just now realized this. But I guess, I don't know, maybe animals, they speak their truth or something. We're gonna pretend that that was the theme. Really engage through your low back, mindfully pushing forward with your chest. Take a couple more deep breaths here. Exhale, release. We're gonna send the arms out wide with our fingertips in like cactus arms. They're like goal posts, but our fingertips are gonna be on the ground. We're gonna inhale, come back up. So engage again, feel that muscle memory where you were in sphinx pose. Engaging through the low back, pushing strong through the arms. Exhale, release. Inhale, back up. And we're gonna dip the right shoulder to our mat. Back to center, dip the left shoulder to your mat. Let me fix the other way. Go ahead and flow with your own breath. Stretching through that right and left front shoulder. Take a couple more rounds each side. Coming up through center. Dipping left. Strong through center. Dip the right. We're gonna knee back into a neutral spine. So bring your hands back underneath. Um, the, your shoulders are kind of by your armpits. Engage your abdominals, engage your glutes, the tops of your thighs, your triceps, your biceps. We're gonna push ourselves all the way up into high plank or option to come up on your knees first. 
Exhale, root to rise, nice and slow. So if you're on your knees, stay activated in your core, activated in your arms. If you're in high plank, pushing through your shoulders, long through your neck. We're gonna put our weight into our left hand. We turn one more time. And we're gonna put the left edge of our foot on the mat, stacking the right on top of the left and draw a line all the way up into side plank. Really push through your left shoulder, reach, reach, reach with your right arm. Bring your hips up high. Now, if you're on your knees, you can stack your knees on top of one another and do the same thing here. Let me see. Make sure you guys are doing okay. Lovely. Reach your right arm up. Reach, reach, reach. Couple more deep breaths here. Engage. The Embrace the shake. Exhale, come back down. We're gonna shift over to our right hand, stacking our right, our left feet on top of our right and sending the left hand way up high. Sending your hips up high. You can gently gaze up at your left hand, sprawling through the toes. Keeping your fingers engaged. Two more deep breaths here. You got it. Exhale, come back down. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. All the way down onto your mat. You can let your hands go out long beside you. Looking over to the left, placing your right cheek on the floor. Switching, placing your left cheek on your mat. When you're ready, bring your hands back up to that armpit space and push through all the way, sending yourself into child's pose. Letting your forehead rest on top of the mat, tucking your chin into your chest. We're gonna slowly ragdoll our spine, letting each vertebrae stack on top of the other, letting our fingertips kind of drag on the mat, keeping our chin tucked into our chest. Slowly letting your head be the last thing to come up. We're going to come into hero's pose. If this is a little much for your knees, you can take that pillow or block and place that under your buttocks, your glutes, and sit on your block and relieve some of that pressure on your knees. In hero's pose, our legs are pulling in toward one another. We're zipped all the way up with a nice, straight, tall spine. You can bring your hands, uh, your palms to face up and open. We're gonna inhale, bring our arms above head. Exhale, 
inhale, twist over to the right, sending the right fingertips back for brace and the left uh, fingertips to our right outer leg. And you can look over your right shoulder gently, creating a gentle twist in our spine. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, go the other way. Left fingertips back to brace. Right fingertips at the outer edge of our left leg. I once heard somewhere that you're supposed to move your spine in six different ways every day. And you've basically done all six of those today. We leaned over to the left and over to the right. We twisted to the left and to the right and we moved their cat cow. So to create a healthy spine, you're supposed to do each one of these six movements every day and I guess you'll be able to do back bends if you do that. No, I'm joking. You're supposed to have a healthy spine to help carry you through, through your day and have good posture. Inhale, back to center, arms above head. We're gonna exhale and bring our hands behind our body with our fingertips facing in towards our toes. If you want to have a block, your big giant book or something, if you don't want to come all the way down to the mat. Pulling your shoulder blades in towards one another, pushing, sending your heart space forward, strong through your neck, gently gazing up. Careful not to let your legs sprawl out here, keeping your thighs hugged in toward one another. There's some funky sounds going on in my house right now. I'm the only one home. So weird. I'll take a couple more deep breaths here. Exhale, push yourself back up. We're gonna untuck our legs and send them out in front of us, bringing the soles of your feet flat on the mat. Inhale, your arms above head and exhale, send them back again, fingertips facing towards you or towards your, your glutes. Option to stay here or option to gently bring those hips up into reverse tabletop. Pushing through your shoulders, engaging your glutes, squeeze those babies together. Really push through, bring your hips way up high, creating a nice flat tabletop. I don't let my toddler sit on me this way they probably would try. Two more. Big deep inhale. Exhale, release, bring your hips back down to the earth. And bring your arms to give yourself a big giant hug. We're going to send the legs out long. Udasana creating a nice tall spine. Inhale, arms above head. Exhale, we're gonna hinge at the hips just like we do when we go into forward fold. 
And so we're laying our belly on top of our thighs and slowly, slowly inch yourself forward, meeting yourself right where you need to be. If you've taken this class with me before, and so I just want you to be very mindful of the back of your legs and not to overextend or pull any muscles. With each exhale, you can go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, keeping your shoulders pulled in toward one another, strong through your arms. Know the difference between pain and discomfort. So know if you're harming yourself or if this is just uncomfortable for you. And um, a lot of people will say that when you start to get uncomfortable is just when the pose begins. Inching forward. The goal is not to bend all the way over your legs. The goal is to, be, to create a stretch in the back of your legs that feels comfortable for you. That feels welcoming or maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but with meaning behind it. Take a couple more exhales. Holding forward more each time. And when you're ready, you can slowly bring yourself back up to Dandasana, our staff pose. Our toes are still engaged. Nice, straight spine. Reach through, reach for the backs of your knees and go ahead and bring yourself onto your back. You can rock back and forth a couple times, massaging your kidneys or your spine that you've moved so much today. I always really like this and I don't know why, but I'm always the one in class that's taking way too many like rocking chairs. So I should probably stop. <laughs> when you come back all the way onto your mat, keep your um, heels tucked into your glutes. We're going to walk our shoulders underneath our back, bringing our hips up off the floor, Interlacing your fingers behind you, sending your hips up, up high and keeping your thighs mindfully pulling in towards one another. Don't want to splay them out too far here. Coming into bridge pose. Option to move through this so you can come back down and come back up with your breath. Tucking your chin into your chest to engage that throat chakra. Sending those hips way up high are moving fluid with your breath. Clench in those glutes. Starting to feel a fire burn in your thighs. Three more breaths, you got it, keep going. With your fluid movements or with your stillness, find your dristy point and really send your focus there. So that light that we had in between our hands at the beginning of the practice, come back to that feeling and let it give you some power. 
to know that you are strong, your voice is heard. Exhale, release, bring your hips back down. You can take a couple windshield wipers, sending your knees off to one side and then the other. So we're gonna move into shoulder stand. And I want you guys to be very mindful of your spine, the back of your neck. As we do this, let me make sure I got some room here. Okay, so we're on our back. We're gonna send one leg up. And then the other, just kind of experimenting with our sense of balance here. Send the one leg up, bring your hips up and bring your hand underneath the small of your back. You can send up the other leg and work your way to get your, or your elbows underneath the small of your back and place your hands on your back and slowly bring your feet up to the sky. So the majority of the weight is on your elbows and your shoulders into shoulder stand. And so your chin is tucked into your chest. You're pushing through your, uh, your elbows in towards one another, engage through the glutes, through the toes, sending them all the way up. Let me check in on you. Love it, love it. Tuck your elbows in. You can keep walking them in underneath the small of your back. Option two, keep alternating your legs and moving in and out to find what feels comfortable for you. Or option two, send your legs all the way over into plow pose. So if you're in shoulder stand, you can slowly let your tops of your feet come towards your mat into plow, chin tucked into chest, hips stacked on top of shoulders, our elbows still coming in toward one another, still to brace our hands on the back of our back. If you're having a hard time getting your legs um, up into the air, into shoulder stand, go ahead and try to roll yourself up there. Sending your legs up, over, and then up. If you're in plow, go ahead and stay there for a couple more breaths. When you're ready, if you're still up in shoulder stand, you can slowly bring down one leg, and then the other, if you're in plow, gently bring your feet back up overhead and then back to the ground. Bring the soles of your feet into each other into reclined butterfly. You can take a couple little flutters here, sending your arms out wide, taking up as much space as you need to. You're welcome to close your eyes. and check back with your intention that you set at the beginning of the practice.
When you're ready, we're going to take our peace fingers, our pointer finger and our middle finger, and we're going to reach for the big toes, wrap them around your big toes into happy baby. Rocking back and forth. You can uh, send one leg out long and tuck the other one into your armpit. And switch legs. Open them both up to a wide leg, happy baby. I have no idea if that's what it's called. I really just made it up, but it sounds pretty good. Wide leg, happy baby, not a wide baby. That might also be fine. Take a couple more movements, authentic movements here for yourself. Whatever your body's asking for that you still need. If you want to send one leg over and the other. When you're ready, we're all going to meet with our hands slightly above like straight out wide, just a little bit higher, almost like a tree. Take a big, deep inhale and exhale audibly with that ujjayi breath. On your next inhale, clench every muscle of your face, purse your lips together, close your eyes, squeeze them in tight. Exhale, open your eyes wide, stick your tongue out. <sighs> inhale, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, release. <sighs> One more time. Inhale, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, release it out. <sighs> Bring your arms wherever they feel comfortable, all the way out wide. You can bring your legs out wide. Moving those glutes out of the way so you can feel the small of your back on the mat. Have your palms facing up as to receive all of the lovely things that the universe gives to you. You can gently bring your eyes to close and check in with your body from where you started. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So check back in with your body, letting your shoulders sink deep into your mat. Feeling the rise and fall of your breath.
I'm gonna read you a couple of quotes from Martin Luther King Jr. that I found that resonated with me today. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Our lives begin to end the day that we become silent about things that matter. So bring your focus back to your Vishuddha chakra and allow yourself to be true with your voice. Speak up for the things that matter. Start to wiggle through your fingers and your toes, coming back into the present moment. Keeping the eyes closed, you can roll over onto the right or left side of your body using your forearm as a pillow beneath you. And when it feels right for you, you can push yourself up into a seat. Bringing our hands back into our mudra, our fingers interlaced and our thumbs, thumb tips touching one another. Gently laid in our lap near our navel. I like to close today's practice with um, three hums in unison. The sound hum is the Bija seed sound for the throat chakra. Each one of the seven chakras has its own Bija seed sound as to ignite that area and let your voice ring true. You can inhale. Ha. within me, honor the light within all of you. Namaste, friends. I hope you all enjoyed and you feel like you can speak your truth. <laughs> So everybody who came tonight, all of your proceeds are going to go to this awesome little um, place I found called Embrace Race. And so it's a kind of like a school that helps educate children and their families 
um, and bring them up into hopefully a little bit better of a world. Um, and if you're signed up for the unlimited, I'm just going to take a portion of that and put that towards it. I hope nobody got hurt when you're doing shoulder stands. <laughs> 